Hello everybody, what's up? In this video, we will be comparing the RX 484GB with the GTX 1060 6GB. Previously, we compared it with the 3GB version and the RX 480 on average was 6% faster. Let's see how the 6GB compares now in 2021. These GPUs were released back in 2016. The RX 480 was announced at Computex by Raja Koduri, now working with Intel. It was marketed as an affordable premium VR graphics card and it was released on June of 2016. The RX 480 was priced at $200 for the 4GB version and $240 for the 8GB version. It was expected to perform close to the R9 390 while consuming much less power. The Polaris architecture improved the efficiency of AMD GPUs, but NVIDIA's Pascal architecture was still ahead. The GTX 1060 6GB was released on July of 2016, just weeks later after the RX 480. The GTX 1060 was meant to compete hand-to-hand -hand with the RX 480. It was priced with the MSRP of $250 and $300 for the Founders Edition. It had less VRAM 6GB of GDDR5 compared to the 8GB of the RX 480. But when they were released, even 4GB was still plenty for 1080p gaming. In terms of performance, back in 2016, the GTX 1060 had the performance lead. 12% faster in 1080p according to Hardware Unboxed. But we saw a glimpse of future since the RX 480 was beating or having close performance to the GTX 1060 on the new games like Doom. The RX 480 with its Polaris architecture improved the efficiency of AMD GPUs, but the GTX 1060 with its 120W TDP is still ahead. Both of these GPUs and the refresh a year later of the RX 480, the RX 580, and the GTX 1060 has become legendary GPUs. Even now, after 5 years, they are still the best $200 GPUs. This is kinda sad on the other hand, AMD released the 5500 XT, but it barely beat the RX 580, and the GTX 1660 which was a little bit better than the GTX 1060, but it wasn't worth upgrading. And with the pandemic and the explosion of mining again in 2020 and 2021, we still haven't got new value $200 GPUs that beats the RX 480, 580, and 1060. The prices are still going crazy for all the GPUs from budget to the enthusiast. In fact, on the used market, you can see the RX 480, 580s, and 1060s selling for $200, $300, and even $500. Crazy times. Hopefully, things get better in the near future. I've heard news that early next year, new $200 GPUs will be released by AMD, Nvidia, and even Intel. Hopefully, our 5-year-old GPUs will be dethroned at the $200 price mark. But looking at how things are, we can only hope and wait. On the AMD side, we'll be testing the Sapphire RX 480 Nitro Plus OC 4GB. I would have loved to test the 8GB version but I don't have it in my hands. I have all these cards because I just borrowed them from my friends. Anyways, for the Nvidia side, we have the Gigabyte GeForce GTX 1060 Windforce OC 6GB. Both of these GPU will be running stock out of the box. No overclocks and custom fan profiles are applied. I did a specific revisit on both of these GPUs so if you want to see more, check them out. Links down in the description. After that being said, here are the specs. Here is the test system we'll be running these graphics cards on. Before I show the results, I want to say that the background gameplay is a completely separate gameplay. I have benchmarked a specific part of the game that is replicable, and I did them 3 times for each game so I can assure that I get reliable results. I chose these games because they are the most played games and for the AA titles, they are the games that I have available. All of that out of the way, let's take a look at the results. On Valorant, the RX 480 has a slight lead at 283 FPS compared to the 275 of the 1060. But these FPS are extremely high and it's pretty much a tie. 
the RX 480 has a 1% low of 128 and 127 for the 1060. Both of these GPU will deliver extremely playable performance, and if you want more FPS in this game, I recommend upgrading your CPU to a 5600X or an i5-12600K rather than upgrading your GPU if you're serious about this game. The GTX 1060 takes the win with Fortnite, having 93 FPS average compared to the 87 of the RX 480. The 1% loss on the other hand were better with the RX 480. 61 FPS against the 48 of the 1060. Though, if you're a competitive Fortnite player, you'll never play on high quality anyways. And on ultra low competitive settings, both of these GPUs can deliver 144 FPS and above. Just like Valorant, it all depends on your CPU. Though, if you're casual and do enjoy eye candy graphics, the RX 480 and the 1060 can deliver fairly fluid performance. GTA 5 performance is a tie, having the same 98 FPS and 1% lows of 78. When both of these GPUs were first released, the GTX 1060 was winning in terms of performance. But nowadays, in 2021, the RX 480 has really closed the gap and actually tied the performance. Though this game is from 2014. Rockstar, where's GTA 6? Call of Duty Warzone seemed to love AMD cards. The RX 480 4GB with an average FPS of 91 and 1% loss of 76, that's a 20% increase in terms of average FPS compared to the 78 of the GTX 1060 6GB. The 1% loss of the GTX 1060 is also lower at 60 frames per second. So if you're a Call of Duty Warzone player, you're best served by the Polaris GPU. Battlefield is pretty much the same story, not as huge of a difference like Warzone, but it's still a difference. The RX 480 is capable of delivering an average of 94 FPS compared to the 81 of the GTX 1060. That's about a 16% increase in average performance, and the 1% is 72 and 55 respectively. So just like Warzone, you'll have a smoother gameplay with the RX 480 in Battlefield 5. Apex Legends, just like GTA 5, is a toss-up. The performance is pretty much equal, so both of these GPU will offer highly playable performance. I deem 90fps to be the minimum to be competitive in the game, and both of these GPUs delivers that. They are averaging around 99fps and 1% dose is a bit different, 77 for the RX 480 and 723 for the 1060, but in-game I don't think you will notice that difference. Forza Horizon, like Apex Legend, was pretty much a similar performance. The RX 480 has an average FPS of 98, while the GTX 1060 has 100. The 1% 1 low is also really close, 81 and 78, respectively. With this GPU, you can enjoy the streets of UK at high quality graphics with fluid performance. Doom Eternal is where the GTX 1060 3GB got decimated by its 3GB of VRAM. The GTX 1060 6GB did better but the RX 480 still had a leg up, though it should be said that I have tested in low graphics quality. The GTX 1060 having a larger VRAM buffer can go up to ultra quality while the RX 480 4GB can only go up to high, but medium if you don't want to use all of your VRAM. That being said, the RX 480 delivered 122 FPS average, while the 1060 offered 103 FPS. Still highly playable performance and much better than the 1060 3GB, and the 1% 1 lows are 87 and 70 respectively. Another game where the RX 480 and the GTX 1060 ties in performance. 
both of them delivering around 44 fps average and 1% loss of 32. I prefer having 60 fps average. That's what I deem to be a good experience for AA titles, though 44 fps is still playable at low settings in Cyberpunk 2077. This game is just so hard to run on older hardware, so if you're looking for 60 fps experience with decent quality settings, you have to upgrade. But saying that is almost an insult since the prices of today's GPU is higher than the Everest itself. Splitgate favors the NVIDIA GPU. With an average FPS of 221, it's a 6% FPS increase to the 209 FPS average of the 480. The 1% low though is better with the 480 at 169 compared to the 133 of the 1060. These frames are really high even at max settings in Splitgate, so I don't think you'll be complaining about FPS with both of these GPUs in this game. The GTX 1060 in this game rocketed to his own league. An average FPS of 291, it's a massive 30% performance increase compared to the 223 of the RX 480. The 1% loss in the other hand was similar, 183 and 175 respectively. But just like Splitgate, I don't think you'll be seeing the difference between these GPUs while you're in-game. Both of them will give you highly playable FPS, perfect if you're competitive in Rocket League. GTX 1060 gets a victory in War Thunder. An average FPS of 153 compared to the 145 that the RX 480 delivers. The 1% low is slightly higher at 106 to the 102 of the 480. They both offer highly playable performance, so I don't think you'll go wrong with either of them. The only thing that is going wrong is the repair cost in this game. Overwatch was surprisingly a victory for the RX 480. I remember years ago that the GTX 1060 was beating it in this game. Looks like AMD Fine Wine is aging well once again. The RX 480 having 164 FPS average compared to the GTX 1060 135 FPS. The 1% 1 low is also better for the RX 480 at 100 compared to the 80 of the GTX 1060. Though, if you're a casual player, either of them will give you amazing performances. If you're a competitive gamer on the other hand, we all know you're playing on ultra low quality anyways, and in the graphics quality, both of these GPUs would not even break a sweat. Red Dead Redemption 2 was a huge victory for the RX 480. 63 FPS average, a massive 28% increase in performance compared to the 49 FPS of the GTX 1060. In fact, the RX 480 1% low is equal to the average FPS of the 1060. That's brutal. The 1% 1 loss of the 1060 is 29. If you want to play Red Dead Redemption 2, the Radeon card is your best choice for this game. And finally, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. This game is also a win for the RX 480, average FPS of 58 and 1% loss of 46 compared to the 50 and 32 of the GTX 1060. The newer games seems to be favoring the Polaris GPU, or maybe Nvidia has just stopped developing the drivers for the Pascal series, and if that's the case, that's kinda sad since the Pascal series is just legendary. After taking a look at each title, let's see which GPU is faster now at all 15 games. The RX 480 is 5% faster across all 15 games in 2021. It's just poetic that the RX 480 ended up being faster after 5 years. I guess AMD just has better support for their older GPUs, or the Polaris architecture has just aged better. Even if the RX 480 
is now 5% faster is not that huge of a difference considering all the games. Both of these GPU are still trading blows and will continue to do so. They are both awesome GPUs. And if you guys bought these GPUs 5 years ago, I'm sure that they served you well and still serving you well to this day, hopefully. So what did we learn? The Polaris card performs better in newer titles such as Red Dead Redemption, Doom Eternal, and others. So if you're looking to play newer titles, the RX 40 is your card. Though, the GTX 1060 is still kicking and not that far off. Just pick whichever costs less, if that's even possible nowadays in 2021 GPU market. If you're desperate to buy a graphics card then, for the Polaris GPU, try and get the 8GB version of the 480 and the 580 because they will offer a bit better performance and having 8GB of VRAM compared to 4GB is just better because newer games are becoming resource intensive just like Doom Eternal. Though, as we have seen, the 4GB is still no slouch. And for the 1060, try to avoid the 3GB variant and go for the 6GB if you can. Hopefully, we can get new entry level or budget GPUs soon or at least the GPU market gets back to normal. Let's cross our fingers. Thanks to everyone who left feedbacks on my previous comparison, the GTX 1060 3GB versus the RX 480 4GB. Comments like this helps me make my videos better. I'm really thankful for you guys. Thanks for watching the video everybody. I would appreciate your support so if you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like. Subscribe to not miss upcoming tech videos. Give a comment because it helps with algorithm just if you want to. If you have questions or suggestions or anything, just type it in the comments. I will reply when possible. I appreciate all of you viewers of this channel. Take care and see you next time. Bye.